A massive hurricane ripped through the Carolinas, destroying a lot. We had some trees fall and lost power for a few days, which made us realize that we need to be a little more self-sufficient by installing an off-grid solar system and making some drains to help reroute water. After figuring out the permitting process, we decided to install the solar panels on the gym that we built in a previous video. We started by cutting a bunch of tree limbs because they cast a shadow onto the roof of the gym and we need as much sunlight as possible. This was a lot harder to do than it looks and it was pretty damn sketchy. I now understand why people who cut trees charge so much money. So it's been about 6 hours and we got about 90% of all the trees cut. The entire roof is now nice and sunny, which hopefully is enough sun to produce enough electricity to allow this entire gym to be fully off grid. Once we finished trimming the trees, we cleaned off the roof really well so we can install the brackets that will hold up the solar panels. We're going to be installing a total of 5 panels equaling out to 1000 watts of solar, which isn't enough to run my entire house, but it should be enough to keep my anchor power station nice and full, allowing the gym and the patio to be fully off grid. After making some measurements and snapping my chalk line exactly where the solar panels will go, I had to locate exactly where the rafters are and the easiest way I find to do this is by using a hammer and listening closely. But then all my measurements were all done and it was officially time to install the solar panel brackets. These brackets slide underneath your shingles and have two holes in them so you can secure them directly to your rafters. I used the pry bar to carefully raise my shingles, then applied some roofing grade adhesive before sliding it under the shingle. I got these brackets from Signature Solar which isn't sponsored, but I'll link everything down in the description below. I then installed the solar panel bracket onto the flashing and screwed it directly into the rafter. I repeated the same process over and over until all the solar panel brackets were installed. Once the brackets were all installed, it came with these rails that screw directly onto the solar bracket and the solar panels screw directly onto the rails. Installing the solar panel brackets and the rails took us just about the entire day to do and ended up costing us a little over 150 bucks, which isn't too bad. But then just like that, all the solar panel brackets were all installed. Now that the brackets are all finished up, it's time to install the solar panels. I made sure all the wires are facing the same way and started from the bottom. I slid the clamps onto the rails then tightened them down, securing the solar panel onto the rail. I then slid the middle clamps onto the rails, which holds two panels at the same time, then tightened them down. I then repeated the same process over and over until all the solar panels were installed. Now that all the solar panels are installed, we're going to install these little grounding clips that have these little grooves in them that dig themselves into the metal connecting all the solar panels together. Since we're going to be connecting the solar panels to an Anchor Solex power station, it requires the voltage to be as close as possible to 60 volts. So I'm going to connect two of the solar panels in series, then connecting them to the rest of the system in parallel, equaling the 46 volts, which should be plenty of power to get this power station nice and charged. But after connecting all my solar panels together, I had to run the wire into the house, so I drilled a hole where the anchor power station will go, then drilled a hole into the soffit so I can run a piece of conduit. I then traced the solar gland onto the roof, then cut out a piece of shingle so the solar gland can fit properly. This thing's pretty cool because it slides underneath your shingle, allowing you to run wires into the house with no leaks. Before installing it, you just gotta flip this thing upside down and add a thick bead of roofing grade adhesive and that's it. I then drilled a hole where the wires will go and screwed it into the roof. To connect the solar wires from the inside of the house to the solar panels, I'm using this junction box just in case I gotta access these wires at some point, it'll be nice and easy to do. 
After installing the junction box, I slid my conduit into the roof, cut it to size, then used some PVC cement to put it all together to ensure this thing doesn't leak. I then ran my wires up into the conduit and I didn't use a snake because these wires are pretty stiff and I only need to go 7 feet so it was pretty easy to do. Once the wires were ran into the solar gland, I had to drill some holes so I can install the solar wire connectors. All my wires and solar connectors are rated for 30 amps because I'm doing 1000 watts of solar and I want to be nice and safe. Also keep in mind that I'm not going to be connecting the solar setup to the grid, which is a completely different setup if you are. So if you plan on doing this yourself, make sure you do your own research and reach out to your city or county to make sure you do this correctly. After wiring up all the solar panels, I had to connect my grounding wire. This is an important step because if lightning decides to strike your solar panels, it'll have an easy route to get into the ground and not ruin any of your expensive off-grid equipment. And running this copper wire including the grounding lugs and the rod only ran me like 50 bucks so it's definitely worth to do it. I then ran the copper wire into the solar gland and down into the conduit. Once the copper wire was ran, I hammered a 4 foot rod into the ground, then connected the copper wire to the rod. And right when I thought that I was finished and ready to close up the electrical box, this happened. So we finished installing all of our solar connectors and when we went to go put them back inside of the box, we realized that they don't fit so we're going to get a bigger box to try to fix this problem. This part of the project was pretty discouraging because I spent a bunch of hours connecting everything and making it look nice. But we knew we had to keep going so we got our ass to the store and picked up a different junction box and just repeated the same process again and it actually ended up getting fixed pretty quickly. It only took us about an hour and a half to do it from start to finish so it wasn't too bad. But after installing the junction box and screwing on some fasteners, it was time to come inside so we can make the proper connections to plug in the anchor. And while I was removing one of the electrical outlets, the neighborhood cat came by again and just watched me work for about an hour. I don't even know why he keeps coming by because I'm honestly not a big fan of cats and I don't plan on feeding him. So I can plug the anchor solex to the wall, I picked up one of these male outlets and screwed it down to where an old outlet used to be. This electrical outlet is connected to a breaker and that breaker is connected to the rest of the power of the gym and the patio which gives us extra protection just in case the breaker on the anchor fails which I doubt that it will but better be safe than sorry. But I then rolled the anchor into place and plugged the extension cord into the anchor then the other side into the wall. I then went to the other side and plugged in my solar connection wire. Then plugged the anchor into the expansion battery, flipped the breaker, turn the lights on and just like that the entire solar system was all finished up. Now one of the reasons that we chose Anchor is because it's sleek and tall and we don't have a lot of space inside of this gym. It also comes on wheels which makes it really convenient to roll around and the wheels also come with locks. It also has over protection breakers, 620 volt outlets, 240 volt outlets. This button turns them all on and it also has a bunch of cooling fans to help keep the unit running efficiently. The expansion battery also has cooling fans and an on and off button that tells you how much battery you have left and a plug where you can connect up to 6 more expansion batteries. On the front side you have a display screen that you can shut on and off. If you click this button you can connect to your phone via bluetooth. It also has a 12 volt car socket, a small flashlight, USB and USB-C ports and a reset button. The anchor and expansion battery equal up to a total of 7680 watt hours and can support up to 2400 watts of solar input. So the anchor has been plugged in all day and currently it's at 76%. It's kind of cloudy today so I'm not getting all the solar that I want. I think I'm getting about 240 watts but this thing's completely off grid right now and so far I'm really happy with it. I'll probably make another video at some point updating you guys on how the thing's performing but if you guys want to get an anchor power station or build an off grid system I'm going to link all the materials that I use down in the description below. Now that the solar panels are all finished up, we're going to install a gutter in the back of the gym because when it rains it puddles up here pretty badly and we don't want the gym to sink 
So we're gonna try to reroute the water to the other side of the property. I'm not an expert at installing gutters and I know they're really hard to do. So I picked up these PVC gutters that are plug and play. I slid on the hangers, popped on the end caps, then used some roofing grade adhesive on all the edges. I then went onto the backside of the gym and screwed on the hangers directly to the fascia board. I made sure to stay under the drip edge so the water can just fall right into the gutter. Then cut another piece to size and connected it to the gutter that I just installed. And I made sure to leave a little pitch so the water can naturally slide down. Then added some more adhesive to the rest of the joints. Since we get a lot of leaves in the fall time, we also picked up some of this gutter guard. It's pretty easy to install, it just snaps into the hangers and that's it. After installing the leaf guard, I installed the downspout on the backside, then connected this 4 inch flex pipe. The gutter is going to end up flowing into this drain, but I first need to dig a hole. So my wife and I spent the next three and a half hours digging a trench to the other side of the property. Once we finished digging the trench, it was time to connect everything together. The drain's going to be connected to this 4 inch pipe and we made sure to dig the trench at a 4 inch pitch so the water naturally flows down. I connected the pipes together using these couplings and zip ties and that was it. All the rainwater that flows through this pipe is going to end up in the easement and that's perfect because that's where rainwater belongs. But then we spent the next few minutes burying the pipe with the same dirt we removed, which was a lot less labor intensive than a body. Relax, I'm just kidding, but the next step was to install the drain cap and I zip tied the drain pipe that comes off the gutter to the drain cap just to make sure it doesn't move around. Then put another cap on that drain pipe, zip tied it and that was that. To finish off this area, we've had these hydrangeas that we've been growing for quite some time and it's really time to put them in the ground. So we figured this would be the best spot to put them because it's shaded here for most of the day. And as some of you guys know, hydrangeas don't like a lot of sunlight and my wife loves them so we're gonna make it nice. We made a border with pavers, dug some holes, added some fresh soil, then planted the hydrangeas. We also added some smaller plants, then added some weed barrier to help reduce the amount of weeds that are gonna pop through. Then added another layer of pavers on top before filling it up with rocks. But once we finished with the flower beds, we wanted to protect our solar panels with our Viper Shield ceramic spray. This is a product that my wife and I formulated together. It's got a high concentration of SiO2, making any surface you spray it on super hydrophobic, keeping it cleaner for longer. And every penny generated from each sale goes directly back into making YouTube videos for you guys. So if you want to get one, I'll link it in the description below. But then just like that, all the solar panels, gutters, and flower beds were all finished up.